Hi friends, welcome back to another video on data analytics and data science. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Tubu. I'm a senior data science consultant at PwC here in the Netherlands. I often get asked about how to prepare for a data portfolio project when you're looking for a data analyst job or data science related job. This is a very broad question and in this video, I'm gonna break it down into four questions to help you gain some more clarity and create your own action plan. At the end of the video, I'll share with you some project ideas for your inspiration. This video is going to be a ton of information, so please stick until the end. The first question you might be wondering is, what kinds of projects should you include in your portfolio? Well, this really depends. Data analyst positions differ so wildly from one another, so the best thing to do is to see what you like to do best and see what's described in the job description. My first job as a data analyst five years back was more geared towards data visualization, communicating data, and some statistical analysis and clustering analysis, etc. But other positions might be more about ETL, backend data engineering, or data modeling kind of work. In this video, I'll focus more on the first case which might be a bit more in conjunction with their scientist position. So let's take a look at an example of a job description and see how we could prepare our portfolio for it. So this is an interesting junior data analyst position I found on LinkedIn. And that I think is very typical of a data analyst job listing. So this is a position based in Amsterdam. And take a look at the data team as well to see what kind of team they are having at the moment and what kind of problems they are solving. Then let's scroll down to the responsibilities. So the first bullet point is about dive deep into large business data sets to uncover valuable insights that can be turned into actionable hypotheses. In our portfolio, we will need to cover it in at least one project that is about exploratory data analysis and how to recognize patterns in data and to find valuable insights. So that will be our first project. Moving on to the second point, we have a build dashboards, reports, and visualizations to allow others at the company to be able to ask ask the right data questions. So in your portfolio project, you need at least one project that showcase your ability to build dashboards and visualize data in an effective way and speaks insight. So that would be our second portfolio project. The third bullet point is about working with product owners, developers, marketeers, and merchandising specialists to determine and measure the right metrics. So this point is all about working with other people and how you collaborate with people from different backgrounds to provide values for them. So that would potentially be your third portfolio project. The fourth responsibility we are seeing here is to keep an eye on the ever-changing data challenges at the company. This one is a little bit vague, right? Normally, this kind of experience only comes in when you're actually working in a team. So I would say that you can showcase your ability to recognize challenges by reading more about the company and about the industry. The last bullet point here is to educate and empower others at the company to be more self-reliant on their data needs. So here comes our fourth idea for our portfolio project, which is about educating and explaining different data concepts in an easy way so that people can understand and can be aware of those problems or those challenges with data. Okay, so just by looking at the job description, we already know that we will need to have at least four kinds of projects in our portfolio. There are actually two ways to go about starting a project, whether you first start with an idea you already have in mind and then find the data set. But you can also do it the other way around. That is, first finding the data set that is interesting to you and then come up with an idea. Both of them are totally fine. The next question you might want to ask is how to choose data sets for your project. And this is an important bit. My first advice to you would be to choose something that is interesting to you. If it seems boring, immediately say goodbye to it. Data analysis should be fun and this is your own project. You are the boss and you have the right to choose what you want to work on. The second tip I want to share with you is that the best portfolio project is less about doing fancy modeling and machine learning and more about working with interesting data. So don't sweat too much about finding the most complex data set there is, but more 
or finding what is interesting to you and that you can tell impactful stories with it. For example, this is one of my first data visualization projects made with Tableau. It plots the HIV prevalence in Amsterdam. I created this map in my previous job five years back. This is a very simple map, but you can immediately see the two HIV infection hubs in Amsterdam. One is in the city center where mostly young people live and where the famous red light district is located. And the other hub is the newly developed area in Amsterdam where there is generally lower socioeconomic status. So this is a very simple data set and visualization, but it has great insights and great story to tell. Moving on to the next tip, although Cargo is a great place for finding large data set and clean data set, I would recommend you to use a real data set that is not yet clean because data cleaning, prep and transformation is a real part of a data analyst job and actually any data job. Plus, it's hard to get noticed when you're using data that everyone else has, for example, Titanic dataset or Amnest dataset. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how I used my bank statement data to analyze my own spending habit. This is a little example of using a real-world dataset that is accessible for you and meaningful to you. Another way to get data is to scrape your own dataset, and this would definitely add points to your creativity. Web pages have been around since the 90s, and since then, it's been a huge source of data. Luckily, web scraping is surprisingly easy nowadays, and it is a great way to get interesting data set. You can use Beautiful Soup, Scrappy, or Auto Scraper, or many other specialized packages in Python to scrape literally anything you see on the internet. There is some ethical issue that might come with it, but I'll talk about it in another video. Alternatively, you can also use other online tools such as DiffBot to scrape data. In another video, I also made a small demo on how I use DiffBot to analyze differences between different data science jobs. And I just want to emphasize here that there's a huge difference between using readily clean datasets from Kaggle and creating your own dataset because it shows that you have enough skills to turn a typical messy real-world dataset into a clean data Set. That's tremendous skill to have, and I would say it's more of an art or craft that is worth mastering. Another great way to get data is to use publicly available APIs. Many companies and organizations publish their APIs, and that means that you can make API requests to obtain their data in JSON format in Python or JavaScript. Here's an example of how you could obtain, for instance, the COVID dataset in India through public API in Python. It's very simple with only a few lines of code, and you can turn this JSON data format into a table format that you can use for data analysis or visualization. Here's a big list of free and open public APIs, just to give you an idea of how many interesting stuff you could get and use for your personal project. And if you don't want to use data scripting or API stuff, I also found some other nice data resources that can be helpful to you. This web page, for example, lists all the great resources. It includes all kinds of data from local governments to non-profit organizations to different company commercial data set. Another interesting place to find data and get inspiration for data visualization is the Pudding website. This website is more about data journalism, but they have a lot of interesting and creative stuff there. And in this repo, you can find a lot of funny and quirky data sets that they have used and of course you can also download and use them for your project as well. And here's a single good advice perfect visuals. Regardless of the type of project that you are doing, visuals matter a lot. Let me say that again. Visuals matter a lot. And I guess it applies for many things in life. It is worth spending the time making the visuals beautiful, whether it is with the custom themes where you play with fonts and color palettes for your visualization, or to add interactivity to your visualization. And everyone would love it. With our shiny Flask or other box software like Power BI, and Tableau, you can create really nice interactive visualizations that gives the feeling of more productionalized project. When I work on client projects that involves data visualization and dashboarding, it goes without saying that we need to put as much effort on the data visualization part as the data analysis part and the rest of the project. For example, this is one of the data visualizations I created for a client using D3.js. It visualizes the networks of personalized healthcare initiatives in the Netherlands, and it is all about interactivity and that people can play with it and have fun with it. 
another example is a little visualization I made to show the number of suicidal cases in the Netherlands in 2018. In this landscape, each element represents a person who commits suicide in the Netherlands. Each category of suicide is represented by a certain element. For example, buildings is for jumping from height, clouds is taking drugs or medicine or alcohol, the waves is for drowning, stars for strangulation, and light is for jumping in front of trains and metros. So this is one of the unconventional ways to visualize data with the purpose of provoking emotions rather than to show the exact numbers. There are several ways to bring your project online for other people to come and see. What platform depends on the type of project? For example, if the project is about data visualization with Tableau or Power BI, then the easiest way is to push your project to their public servers. Here's an example of data visualization portfolios on Tableau Public. It is very easy to publish a dashboard to Tableau Public and it's totally hassle-free. On the other hand, for EDA projects with more advanced analysis using R or Python or some other programming languages, you should definitely put your code up on GitHub, comment it and organize it well. You can also write up a little bit about your project in the readme file, include some findings and some visualizations that you made. Another note here is that it's better to publish the notebook form of your code, which would make it more visual and people can follow what's happening in your code and what it's doing. Because if you just publish the R Python code, it will be very hard for people to understand what you're trying to do and what is actually the outcome of the project. For the explainer project we talked about earlier, where you're explaining a complex data concept or ideas, consider writing a blog post on it. If you don't have your own blog, Medium is a great place to start. I started writing on Medium two years ago and it's a very hassle-free place to start writing and showing your knowledge. Finally, a platform-independent way to share your work is definitely to have your own portfolio website. This would be the place where you can tell all about yourself and tie everything you have done together. Although a website is a great way to show your best projects and make yourself kind of stand out, it's totally optional. It's more like a personal branding kind of thing. I also understand that not everyone is a web developer, so in a coming video or one of the coming videos, I'll show you exactly how to create your own portfolio website in a simple and totally free way. If you want to have a custom domain with your own name for your website, you can go on Namecheap or GoDaddy to buy a domain name. Okay, as promised, here's a few project ideas for your inspiration and you can build up on this, create your own ideas based on your preferences and your interests. My first project would be an EDA and basket analysis for groceries data to find the different shopping pattern throughout the year to see if you can find some kind of seasonality in it. Is there a difference between men and women or to find out what people usually buy together. This project would be in R and you can use different packages for EDA and pattern mining and association rule mining in R. The second project would be data scraping, analyze sentiments of stock markets by scraping financial news. And this project would be in Python. You can use the beautiful soup library for data scraping and you can use the NLTK library to work with uh, text data. My third project would be to visualize the CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions over time in my country or to compare my country with other countries in the world. Recently, we've all heard of the COP26 and the risk of the climate crisis in the near future and all the difficult discussion around it. And we don't just want to have a plain graph or map, but we want to intrigue the viewers with a theme that gives the feelings that this is a real and urgent issue. For the team project, you can collaborate with your friends to create a survey in your your social media community about a certain topic that you care about and analyze that data. Or if you have any connection with a local nonprofit organization in your area, you can even ask them to provide a data set to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. See you next time. Bye bye.